Hello, art friends. Welcome back again to another edition of Mr. O'Neill's Art Class on YouTube Holiday Edition. Yes, we are working on holiday crafts, all right? So um, I am the head elf in charge here at Mr. O'Neill's Art Class, and today we are going to be making me some ice skates. Yes, I said it, elf ice skates. Okay, I could not fit in that. Oh, that is the magic of TV. You think I actually could, but look how small those are. We are making ice skates for elves that you could use for ornaments, that you could use for your elf on the shelf to have big fun with, or you could just use for, you know, giggles just to have it around. So we are going to get started in making these. And the first thing that we need to do to do that is I like to make a pattern, okay? If we're going to sew, let's make a pattern first. So I'm going to grab just a blank piece of paper, a scrap piece of paper, and I'm going to go ahead and put it down here. Let's go down to my workspace there, and you can see I have this blank piece of paper. I'm going to go ahead and take myself a marker, and I know I, and I'm going to draw my elf ice skate out here, okay? I'm going to just straight down, and this is just going to be like a boot shape. So here's the top of the boot. Go down, a nice gentle curve, front of the boot, something like that. Practice. Make it however you want it, okay? This is going to be my boot. Now, I'm not done with my pattern yet because to sew this, I'm going to need two of these. So what I will do now is I'm going to take this, cap my marker a little bit, cap my marker, and I'm going to pick up my paper and fold it. And I'm going to fold it not exactly in half, but I'm going to fold it right on that line right on that back of that boot line that I made, right there, fold it just like that, okay? So I've got it folded down on my boot line and I'm going to cut this out. Let's grab my scissors and I'm just gonna cut right here on the fold, not gonna cut that folded line. Doesn't matter if you get this exact or not, it's your boot, you make it your shape and size that you want. So I'm going to cut out a little bit around the toe. Nice gentle curve right here. This ensures that if you're making a pair of ice skates, if you're making a pair of these elf ice skates, that they're both exactly the same or as close to the same as you can get them. So I'm going to go right here. All right, got that. Now, once I unfold it, what this does is double up that shape, right? So I'm going to cut this whole piece out. And there is my elf ice skate pattern. That was really simple. You just have to know how to do it. So there's my pattern, okay? Let's talk about what we're gonna make our ice skates out of. All right, we're not gonna make them out of paper, though I guess you probably could kind of make them out of paper. They wouldn't last quite as long, but I am going to make them out of felt. This is your generic little piece of craft felt. I think it's like 47 cents or something. For one. I have no idea, it's very cheap. Um, so I'm going to grab this, get the little sticker off the back of it. Still new, but you don't have to have felt, okay? You don't have to go to the store and buy this if you don't want to. Any kind of scraps of fabric that you have, this is just some stuff that I have laying around this, that would make a pretty ice cake. The only reason I prefer the felt is because felt doesn't ravel. This is raveling, where the, like the edge of the, the material kind of goes to these little strings. Felt won't ravel. All right, so I like to use that. It's gonna be a little bit easier for you to sew. It's really super easy to poke through. So let's try and use, let's at least start this one. I'm gonna do this first one with the felt. All right, so let's go back down here to my fabric, to my piece of felt. And here is my pattern. I'm going to take my pattern and I am going to put it right, don't cut more than you have to, okay? So, you know, use up all of this. So I'm gonna put this straight line along the bottom on the straight line right here is I don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna put this as close to the edge as I can. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Sharpie back. So I've got a nice clear line to cut on and I'm going to just come around the top, come around the sides and trace my pattern, trace my pattern directly on to the felt. Now, if you guys don't have a Sharpie, if you want to do it, you can do this in pencil. You can see it. It actually probably comes out a little bit better because you can, if you're not careful, you can see the Sharpie when you're done with this. So I've got one of them cut out. 
if I want to cut out another one of these patterns, a, a pattern to do another one, I'm just going to slide it right over here to the side. Keep that same straight one. And let's do another one because I'm going to, uh, maybe I'll make a pair of these. All right. I don't know if I'll do the whole pair of these while you guys are watching because, you know, I don't want to waste your time, but we'll have something. All right. So go ahead and get those down and I'm not going to have to cut this bottom line, right? Because it's already straight. So hold on to that pattern. You may want to make some more. You never know. All right. So grab that and let's cut these out. So really simply, I'm going to just, you know, this is cutting fabric. So cutting fabric, you're going to want to use some nice sharp scissors. You are little ones going to want to, if you've got to use big scissors, you may get some help, but um, this will cut with kid scissors. Felt will cut. You just kind of got to keep your hand really steady and really pull and really open up the scissors and use the back end. If you um, try and cut with the little point of the scissors, it is, is not gonna cut, okay? Because cutting fabric, you need to be a lot, it's a lot harder than cutting paper. But that's another reason why I like to use felt because felt is pretty easy to cut. And again, it doesn't ravel. That's the best thing about it is it does not ravel. Now you guys can see that I left a little bit of a Sharpie mark on there. So that's gonna be important to turn this the right way in a minute is we'll show you how. And let me show you again. And I'm leaving all this little bitty edges here. I'm cutting as much of this exactly because these little scraps of felt, I mean, we can totally use them later. If you turn another ice skate sideways, you can put it right there. You can get out of one piece of this felt. If you've got multiple kids at home or, you know, you've got brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors who want to make and work along and do the elf ice skates with you, or if your parents and grandparents want to work along and do them, you can get a lot of ice skates out of this one piece of felt. Because again, you're making ice skates for elves. You're not making big ginormous ice skates that you're gonna put like on your feet. Not making stockings, though you could, you know, if you wanted to, the same kind of concept. If you wanted to make this, if you wanted to make some big giant stockings, you could totally do that as well with the felt. So I'm gonna put that felt away and I've got two nice little pattern pieces here. So the next thing that we are gonna to do to do this is we gotta sew, okay? I've told you before that I think sewing is an art. You can definitely make the art of the art quilts of Faith Ring Gold. You can make by sewing some absolutely fine artwork, okay? So we're gonna take our elf ice skate and the next thing is I gotta have a needle and thread, okay? Any needle and thread is basically gonna work. If you don't have thread, fishing line will totally work. Also, if you have some more specialized, some thicker thread, if you want to see it, this is called embroidery floss. Embroidery floss will work good and you can really kind of see it. Um, it's all about what you have, okay? You can do any of those things. You could probably actually even use some glue. If you had like some felt glue, some fabric glue, you could do that. I might show you that in a minute. So um, let's start talk about sewing. So I'm going to take my needle and thread. Um, if you are using a real metal needle, get your parents' permission. If you are using a metal needle, get your parents' permission. Mr. O'Neill did not tell you to get a metal needle. No, 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 do not blame that on me. All right, so I'm going to take my metal needle with my parents' permission. Trust me, my mom is watching. She's let me do this. Really, I, I'm not kidding, she is. All right, and I'm gonna take a good long stretch of this. It's, it's not quite as long as my arms are apart but I am going to take that piece of thread and I'm just gonna cut that much off. Put my spool over here to the side. And in this one end over here, I'm gonna tie a knot and it is super hard to do it, okay? It really is and I don't know if I can even show you guys this because the thread is so little. All right, I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna loop it over and stick the little tail through the hole and I pull that and when I pull that out that's going to be a knot and that knot isn't quite big enough it's super tiny can you see it there it is Ooh, 
focus on it, focus on it, focus on there. I need to double that up and I need to like get the knot hopefully in the same place. Oh yeah. And if I do that two or three times, just kind of circling it in there. Boom. I've got, oh, see how that knot gets bigger? Yes, look at there, I got it on camera. So I can take that knot on one side. Now the other side of the fabric, fabric, the other side of the thread, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put in my needle and I'm gonna lick, I'm gonna lick my thread. I know, I know, I know, I know. It helps. It's your own thread. You're the only one licking it. Lick it. Get down here really close, hold it really steady, and thread the needle, and then pull some of it through. Now, some people like to tie, some people like to tie the needle onto the thread. I don't, I just leave a piece hanging out like there, leave a piece hanging, because you're gonna learn to thread your needle again if you pull it out, or if you learn to not pull it all the way through, it's helpful. So I don't do it, all right? Um, you can tie it on there. It makes it a little bit more difficult to pull it through, but it's less times you have to thread the needle. So it's up to you, it's your choice. All right, so let's go back down here to my paper. All right, I'm going to take my pattern and I'm gonna keep this Sharpie on the inside. This is where you can see the Sharpie. I'm gonna fold this over, fold it over just like there. Fold it, fold it, fold it, fold it, fold it, smoosh it down, 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 smoosh it down. And I'm gonna start right here. I like to start at this point of the boot right here. I'm gonna go to the bottom of it and I am going to pull right in this corner. I'm gonna go to the bottom. Be careful of your fingers. Be careful. Pinch away from it. And I'm gonna go all the way, pull that through, hold it, pinch it, pinch it right here at the base of the needle where the thread is so you don't pull it loose and pull it until your knot hits, okay? And then you can sew in one of two ways, okay? When you sew this, you can go either up and down and up and down, like I could go back down right now, or what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna kind of stitch it around the outside. So I am going to go from the top and I'm always gonna pull back to the bottom. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom, just a little bit apart. If you go super far apart, your stuffing's gonna fall out but I'm just gonna go a little bit. Do you see how little, how small? That is totally tough to see on the camera. There it is, it's not very far at all. And I'm going to pull it back through and make sure my thread goes around the outside. All right, Ugh. pull it tight. Go just a little ways, a little ways, a little ways. See, I'm poking it through and it's not where I want it to be, so I'll move it again. See again, just a little bit. Pull it, and I'm always, always, always going to the bottom. That's how I think it's easiest for little ones to remember, is instead of the uppy downy, uppy downy, uppy downy, I'm going all the way to the bottom. And it, it kind of shows off my thread a little bit too. If you had like a little bit fatter thread, or if you're using that embroidery floss, you could totally see this stitch. And if you do nice stitches, if they're all kind of even, always going down, always going down, right there. And even as you go around the corner of the boot, same thing, keep your stitches, try and keep them the same distance apart. Pull through, keep your thumb out of the way. Pull, and you'll see these nice stitches, the same distance, I'm turning my boot around. It does not take super long to do this once you get used to it. Kids, the first time you do this, it's going to be a hot mess, okay? It really will. Is But you will learn and you will have fun. Just go slow. Don't try and keep up with me. That's why I am not having you guys do this live because this is gonna take longer than the time of the video because you haven't been sewing since you were, you know, five years old is, I, when I was little, was kind of, my mom made a lot of um, quilts, made a lot of like baby quilts and stuff. And <clears throat> my sister and I were used as kind of labor to do that, is we were taught to sew and to embroider, to make like little fancy pants knots and things on these. 
so we could help make uh, quilt squares and the embroidered centers of them. So, you know, it comes in handy now. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we go. Pulling out a little bit. Make sure you don't get your thread doubled up because if you get that thread doubled up in there, it's going to be a mess and you're going to have to cut your needle out at the end and we don't want to do that. So I'm almost done because I, when I get all the way back over here, I get to stop because that is it. That is all right there in that corner. That's all we have to sew today because the back, we folded it, remember? We don't have to sew that. It's already a nice fold. So I'm almost there. It's really taken me, I don't know, what is this? A couple of minutes while I'm rambling on. So you guys can get to where you can do this in just a few minutes. I'm trying not to get lazy and let my stitches get bigger here. I'm trying to keep them about the same distance apart, but it's getting wild. And I there's the first time I pulled my thread out. It's not the end of the world. Looky there. I pulled the thread completely out of the needle now because it was getting a little shorter. So I got to re-thread. So back here, lick it. You're the only one that's licked it, so it's not gross. Hold it toward the end and just like that, pull through and re-thread your needle. Okay, right there. And again, get it resituated, hold it still. I'm gonna go from the bottom to the top. And this time I'm gonna remember to grab that thread instead of just grabbing the needle, grab the thread when you pull it through right here, almost like two stitches. Don't get lazy and leave yourself a hole. Go all the way to the end. Now, when I am at the end, I can just tie a knot right here. I can tie a knot or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and down and stitch it together in the same spot. I'm gonna do it like two or three times in the exact same spot and kind of like let my thread tie itself off just like that. Maybe I'll do it four times. I don't know. I lost count. But pull it through as many times as you can right there in that same spot. And you're tied off. You're done. You're finished. You are through. You have sewed yourself. Boom. You have sewed yourself an elf boot right there. Not done yet. We're going to do some more stuff to finish this off. But I'm going to put my needle up. Put my needle carefully. I like to stick it right here in the top of the thread. So that keeps it safe. Let's trim off the extra. There's a little bit of extra right there. Let's trim that thread right there. Good trim. We can trim the rest of this thread right here because it should not come out. Boom, elf ice skate. I told you guys there might be a different way if you didn't want to sew it. So let's try, let's try gluing, okay? I'm going to use my Mr. Hot Glue Gun right here. Okay, again, if you're using a hot glue gun, if you are using a hot glue gun, you need adult help. You need a tall person. This is tall person time. Get somebody to help you out if you are using the hot glue gun. So I'm gonna try with the hot glue gun. I don't know that I've done this before. So with the hot glue gun, the same thing. We would have sewn around this edge right here. So I'm going to put hot glue from here all the way around and we're gonna see if we can close it up. I think I need a new glue stick to help me. All right, so. So a little hot glue, a little hot glue, a little hot glue. Again, you should be having an adult help you so you don't burn your hands. This is the cool melt glue, so I gotta work fast because if I don't work fast, then it is going to um, not pee. It won't stick anymore. All right, so I've got that done on glue on this edge and I'm gonna fold it over, fold it over, fold it over, get my fingers out of the way use something else to poke it down. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, pencil eraser. Poke, 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 poke. Down, 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 all the way. Oh yeah. A little bit of glue's coming out the edges, but that's not a problem. Poke it down. Oh, this might be good. This might be good. This might do it. We'll see, we're gonna let that dry and we're gonna see how this one works in comparison to the one we sewed. I don't know yet, I'm not sure. Like I said, I haven't tried that with a hot glue. It theoretically should work, let's see. All right, so I'm going back to the one that I sewed. This is the fun part right here, boys and girls, is we gotta, we gotta like stuff this. 
we got to stuff it. We got to make it fat. And that's why we left this hole at the top. I always like, like to leave the, it's just like a real boot. There's a hole at the top. We got to stuff this full of stuff. So here's how you can do it. You can take your, these little scraps of your fabric, or you can take your, your felt, the felt that you had, and now you get to shred it. Okay, parents, kids love this part. I'm going to take some scrap, and here's my felt right here. All right, I'm not going to put this whole big wad in here. Now I get to shred the felt. Yes, cut all shreddy. Ooh, oh, yes, just turn it and cut it, and there's a lot of cutting. Oh, yeah, shred it. This is going to make, you're welcome, parents. This is going to make big fun at your house, on your table. You are welcome. This is a little present from Mr. O'Neill to you. I know. If you guys have polyfill, if you have stuffing, use that. If you don't want to use your good piece of felt, get like an old sock. Wash it first. Put it in the washing machine. You know, ask a parent. And, you know, you got to ask somebody if you're going to shred your socks, but you could do it. You don't have to do it with a felt. If you've got old stuff that you can do it, you could shred that. You could put shredded like news. You can stuff it with whatever. Put newspaper in it. Put paper in it. I just like to use felt because it's quieter. It lasts a good long time as long as the stocking does. So I'm gonna shred this all into little bitty pieces, and this takes a while but you want to get it in little pieces because they stuff and they fill in better. If you cut it in little pieces, when it gets too little, just stop. Fingers. All right, so I got this big pile of shredded felt. Pick it up, stuff it in there. Pick it up, stuff it in there. You could use a different color felt if you wanted to. And when it sticks out the top, it looks like it um, is in, uh, you got socks on or something like a different color socks. And you got to see how big you made your elf ice skate. And if you got enough room to get this in there, if you can't fit your fingers in there and really get it stuffed, boom, you got your pencil too. And you can just kind of use your pencil or whatever to stuff that in there because we want to get it all the way down in the toe. You don't want the toe to be flat. You want to get, uh oh, I think my scrap felt is getting glued to the piece that the other ice skate that I made a minute ago. All right, so stuff, 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 stuff. Smush it down, hold it by the boot, the end of the boot, and then just kind of, oh, that is nice. See how it's getting, the, see how the toe's getting filled in? That is the best part, is you want to just slide it over there and get a big, big, fat toe of your boot because you don't want like flat elf ice skates, right? You want to get all of this done make it nice, put it in there, stuff it, stuff it. Don't overstuff it, you know, and you can tell if you've done a good job with your sewing, if you don't like start to get pieces like the stitches coming loose and your, your little scrap um, coming out the sides. I think we've done pretty good. Let's see. All right. All right, I'm gonna save the rest of that stuffing. I'm not done. I need to shred it. I need to make it some more, but I don't want you guys to sit here and like watch me stuff a boot. Okay, so here it is. That one's good. Let's see if this dried. Please let that be dry. Yes, I touched it. It's still it's dry. It didn't burn me. And let's see if we can stuff this one. We can put some of this stuff in here into the one that we glued. We can put some stuffing in there too. I think it got a little skinny. I think if you're gonna use glue is it makes a little bit bigger of a seam than um, what you do with your sewing. I think the glue makes a bigger seam. So you might have to like make a little big, bigger ice skate if you're gonna, your pattern, make it a little bit bigger. But I think this is working, I really do. I'm gonna like just for speed, I think I'm gonna take this piece of scrap fabric that I had here and just kind of like ball it up a little bit and see if I can stuff that in there. And see, this is why I say the bigger pieces don't work as well, because you see I'm having difficulty getting this big piece in. It's not going well. You can do it, but it's gonna be a fight. <laughs> 
is the big piece does not want to go in this little bitty elf ice skate. But with some patience, I think I can get it in there. Maybe, maybe not. But the answer to this is I am shoving and stuffing that pretty hard and my hot glue seam is holding up really well, at least so far. So I'm thinking that if you guys wanted to glue your stockings or your elf ice skates instead of, and I guess they could be stockings too, if you didn't do this next step that I'm gonna show you. Is, so your glue seam is holding up. Glue seam, if you guys want to glue them too, you glue them. But the sewing I think is the fun. That's what I like. It teaches you an art skill. It's something fun to do. But anyway, so you can get your socks, your stockings, your elf boots, whatever. You can get them stuffed up and fat and full of fabric. Just kind of like that. Yeah, now we got it. All right, boom. Get them done. Get it down into the toe. That's what we got to get is just kind of scooch that over into the toe there. And they can be done. You could have little stockings. You could hang them on the tree just like that. You could put a little, um, the little ornament hanger right through that corner. Yeah, you could be done. Or you can keep going. You can make them a pair. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to grab a piece of that embroidery floss, that thicker, thicker string that I've got. And I'm just gonna find the end, and finding the end might be more difficult than it sounds. All right. Oh, it is still tied together. All right, Mr. O'Neill is gonna do a thing now. Let's find the end, find a piece of, I think I'm just going to cut it. I know. People that embroider right now are just going, no, you have to find the end. I uh, don't. I'm doing this on camera. I'm trying to do this fast. So, psh. all right, just a pretty short piece, six, 10 inches long, maybe right there. Grab it. I got to lick it because I am going to try my best. This may not work to thread the needle with the embroidery floss. you may need a bigger needle. I am not using an embroidery needle. So threading this may become difficult. All right, so got it done. Yes, I did it off camera so you couldn't see me struggling, but got it threaded. I'm not necessarily tying a knot in the other end of this this time, because watch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it through the corner of this boot right here. Stick it through the corner of that boot. I'm gonna also stick it through the corner of this boot. Pull it through. And then I can just kind of tie these two ends together, pull my needle through. Make sure you put your needle back over here in your pin cushion, or in this case, my thread spool. So I'm just gonna kind of tie these together. So it is all one piece and you can use this as your hanging or this would be like when you know you take, um, I don't know if you do it or not. When I try and carry two pair of shoes or two pair of boots that have laces is you tie the shoestrings together. You ever done that? You tie the shoestrings together so it's easier to carry and you carry like it's carrying one thing instead of two. So I'm gonna tie that together and I'm probably gonna like tie it twice. It's just crossing it over cross it over and then put the extra through the little hole right there. Boom, looky there. Two little stockings, two little boots, but I told you these were ice skates. Here's the magic, here's the magic. Psh, get yourself a paper clip or a safety pin. I don't think I have any safety pins. I can't show you that. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna un pull it loose just a little bit, just a little bit. Let's go to my other camera and see if you can see it. Pull it just loose just a little bit, right? Not even that much. Just a little bit. And then right in this seam, if you poke it around, 
right here in the front, you can slide the tip of that in and pull it back. You have your skate blade. Look at that. Now this I think is gonna be the problem with the hot glue. I don't think it's gonna be that easy with the one that I hot glued. So uh, 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 like there, take it and see the glue does not want to let me have a spot to put it in. So I'm gonna have to like really poke and really find a place. I should have possibly if I was thinking left a place where I didn't have some hot glue in the front. But, mm. but you can, there it is. Oh, sort of, it went through the fabric. But if I do it again and smush it back in there, maybe I can do that. Maybe I can't, if you did, if you had that problem, if you did it, if it went weird, you're, you're not done yet. I'm just going to magical hot glue. Put some hot glue on the bottom of my skate. Hot glue, hot glue, hot glue. And then I'm gonna take my paper clip and hold it away from the hot glue and just hot glue my paper clip on the bottom. So not a lost cause if you did it either way. So you can hot glue it, two little pieces right there. Now you do all sorts of stuff. If you want to decorate this, great. If you want to get some fabric paint, I got some little gold sparkly stuff. Glittering, glittering gold. I use this to put names on stockings. Put some little stars on there. All sorts of things. If you want to go across the top and you want to put like a little piece of white trim or something on your um, stocking, you can totally do that. I think I've got a piece of white felt conveniently standing close by. And I'm just gonna cut like a rectangle of this. I could make a pattern. I'm not making a pattern this time because I'm doing it quick for you guys. Just kind of eyeballing and estimating how much I need. Take that. And that'll be, it'll go around the top here, right? And I could totally stitch that on, or I could grab my friend, the hot glue gun, and I could just put some glue right there. This is right on there. Press it down, flip her over, put a little bit more of the hot glue. Now don't do this before you stuff it, right? Don't do this before you stuff it. Stuff it first, because this will keep you from being able to stuff it really well. Put a nice little piece of trim over there and I cut mine way long, way long right here. That's fine because I can just snip it off right there at the end, okay? So that, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends of all ages, that is how you make some of the cutest little ornaments ever on the planet is elf ice skates, right? So I hope you've enjoyed it. That is my last video. If you've only watched this one, watch more. There's, there's a bunch of these holiday craft videos, but that is the last video that I am shooting for this. Mr. O'Neill's art class on YouTube holiday extravaganza. Anyway, so have a Merry Christmas. Have a happy holidays. Take time. Spend it with some family. Have some good times. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. And as always, make yourself some art. I mentioned in another video, family craft night, right? Get the big people involved. Do it. All right, so make some art over the holidays. Be safe, be well. I will see you again. Thank you very much for watching. Bye, guys.